So in this problem, we're being asked how many moles of iron 2 sulfate are in 125 milliliters of a solution with a concentration of iron 2 sulfate of 0 0.0530 molar. So we want to look at what we know about molarity. Remember that we know that molarity is equal to moles over liters. And so we want to first, if we're dealing with those liters, we need to convert our milliliters to liters. All right, so let's start there. So remember, we're going to just set up a conversion factor. We want milliliters on the bottom to cancel. We want liters on top. And we want the scientific notation that goes with milli, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 3. And that goes with the base unit. That is the one without the prefix. All right, so my milliliters will cancel and then I will be using another conversion factor. Now I'm trying to get from liters to moles and in order to do that I want to think about I've got my uh, units here. I want liters on the bottom. I want moles on the top and that's where this molarity number comes in. So remember that I've got 0 0.530 molar and we know that that is equal to 0 0.530 moles per liter. And we know that that is equal to 0 0.530 moles per one liter. When we say that's per liter, that's per one liter. This becomes this conversion factor. So that molarity is going to go with the moles here. And that's the number of moles in one liter of solution. So go ahead and plug that into your calculator, and what I get is 0 0.00663 moles of iron 2 sulfate. All right, so my liters have canceled. I'm left here with moles, and that's the unit for my answer. Let's take another a look at another problem. Okay, so I've got 15.5 grams of barium chloride, and it's dissolved in enough water to make 150 milliliters of solution. It's asking me for the concentration of barium chloride. The concentration is molarity. Remember that that's our chemistry word for concentration. So let's go ahead and figure that out. So we need to set up molarity equals moles over liters. Remember that's in your yellow packet. So let's look and see what we have in our problem. It doesn't give us moles, but we can very easily determine the number of moles in the, uh, from that grams. We know how to convert from grams to moles. And then we don't have liters, but we certainly know how to convert from milliliters to liters. So let's do our first calculation with the grams. We've got 15.5 grams of barium chloride. Remember that this is an ionic compound, so we have to think about the charges. So barium is a 2 plus, chloride is a 1 minus, so it's going to be BaCl2. And then we're just going to do what we did as we began our mole unit. We're going to go from grams of barium chloride to moles of barium chloride. And we're going to use our molar mass of barium chloride. So remember, we'll add up one barium and two chlorines. That's the number of grams in one mole of barium chloride. And when I calculate this, you should stop and practice. Make sure you can do this yourself. That gives me 208.28 grams, and that's the number of grams in one mole. Remember that that's that molar mass. So that goes with the mass unit, which is grams. And so I got 0 0.0744 moles of barium chloride, and I actually got a longer number, and at this point I'm just going to leave that in my calculator. I don't want to round it out, so if I round it now it could cause a rounding error in my answer. The other thing that we have to do, let's go ahead and we can put our moles in, 0 0.0744 moles of barium chloride, and then we've got to calculate our liters. So I'm just going to come over here and do that. So 150 milliliters. Remember that if you are confident doing this in your head, you are certainly welcome to. So we're going to go from milliliters to liters, and that scientific notation for milli is 1 times 10 to the negative third 
and then that goes with our base unit, so that gives us 0 0.150 liters. So I'm just going to put that here on the bottom in my molarity equation. And then I'm going to put this all into my calculator. And what I got here, now we want to pay attention to our sig figs. Three in this number, but only two in this number. So I got 0 0.50 molarity, molar, barium chloride. All right. So if you have questions on these or this isn't making sense, make sure you come and see me for some help. Let's try another problem. So this problem is asking us what volume in liters of a 0.1 molar ammonia solution contains 4.95 times 10 to the 23rd ammonia molecules. So what we have to do, we've got two numbers in this problem. We've got to figure out which one to start with. We're actually going to string some conversion factors together string them, some conversion factors together to this one. If we're given the molarity, we can find the volume. Remember our flow chart. Our molarity will be a conversion from uh, moles to volume. And so what we have to do is figure out what we need to get started with to get to moles. Molarity is not going to be the number that you start with. It is going to be a conversion factor. So what we're going to do is start with our molecules. So let's look at that. We've got 4.95 times 10 to the 23rd ammonia molecules. Hopefully you remember that your formula for ammonia is NH3. And then our, if you look at your flow chart, you want to go from the particles to moles. So we're going to go from molecules to moles. Those are our particles. So we need molecules on the bottom. And we need moles on the top. That first step is getting us to moles. And so in order to go between particles and moles, we always use Avogadro's number, and it goes with the particles. In this case, those are molecules, so that's going to go here. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles or molecules in one mole. And then our molecules will cancel, we'll be left with moles, and then we want to use our molarity as a conversion factor. Now remember, we want to think about our units first. So moles of NH3 on the bottom to cancel. And we're trying to get to volume in liters, so liters on top. And then we've got to figure out what to do with this conversion factor. So remember that molarity is going to equal 0 0.100 molar. And we know that that is 0 0.100 moles per liter. So we know that that's 0 0.100 moles per one liter. This becomes our conversion factor. So the 0 0.100 goes with the mole. And then we put that with the one with the liter. So that's molarity. It's a conversion factor. And we can have moles on the top or moles on the bottom, depending on how we're using it. So we're going to go ahead and plug that into the calculator. And what you should get is uh, I got 8.22 liters of ammonia. Don't forget to check your sig figs on that. All right, let's take a look at another problem. I know that this molarity is a conversion factor can be a little bit confusing, so let's try another example like that. So in this problem, we're being given a volume of a glucose solution with a concentration, remember those square brackets mean concentration, of 0 0.0500 molar. We're being asked for mass. So think about the flow chart there. If we're being asked for mass, we're going to have to have moles to find mass. And then in order to find moles, we're going to start with our liters. We're going to use our molarity as a conversion factor. So let's set that up. So remember that we'll not, well, we won't start problems with molarity. They're always good. That will always be our conversion factor. So we've got two liters of glucose. And then we want to go, remember our first step is going to be to go to moles from liters to moles. And so we're going to put liters of glucose on the bottom. And then we're going to put moles of glucose on the top. And then what we'll do is we'll look at our molarity. That's our conversion factor here. 
that 0 0.0500 molar. And then we know that that big M is also moles per liter. And so we know that that 0 0.0500 moles in one liter. And I wouldn't expect you to show this on a test or anything like that, but I'm just trying to help you understand this is probably one of the tougher things to get in this unit. So the 0 0.0500, that goes with the moles, and then the one goes with the liter. So that molarity becomes our conversion factor. And then our next step, we've got our liters out of the way, but we've got to get from moles to mass. And we already know how to do that. We learned that early in the unit. So we're going to go from moles of glucose and you're going to add up those six carbons, those 12 hydrogens, and those six oxygens, and you're going to find the molar mass. You should do that calculation yourself right now, and then click back on, and I'll fill in the rest. We're going to want grams on the top, and we know that the grams, when you add all that up, is 180.15 grams, and that's in one mole. And when you punch that one into your calculator, so in that one, that's going to be uh, grams of glucose because our other units will cancel. If you go back and look, our liters canceled, then our moles canceled, we're left with grams. And when you put that into your calculator, you would get 18.0 grams. Remember sig figs, three in this number, three in this number, so our final answer should have three sig figs. All right, so in this one, we've strung together a couple of conversion factors to help us get there. Uh, just look at your flow chart for now. Remember that eventually you will want to be able to do that without using the flow chart, but it's a good way to get started. Okay, so let's take a look at one more. In this problem, you're being asked about the volume of a 0 0.150 molar solution of aluminum nitrate that we would need to obtain 5 grams of aluminum nitrate. Again, molarity here will be a conversion factor, not something that we would start with. So we're going to start with our grams. Again, stringing some conversion factors together. So we're going to go from grams of aluminum nitrate to moles of aluminum nitrate using the molar mass. And then we're going to go from moles of aluminum nitrate to volume of aluminum nitrate using that molarity. So let's take a look. That'll be 5.00 grams of aluminum nitrate. Now remember, you've got to figure out the formula. It's ionic, so aluminum has a 3 plus charge. Nitrate is one of your polyatomic ions with a 1 minus. So in order to make that neutral compound, it's going to be AlNO3, 3. And then we're going to go ahead and make that first step. Remember that first step is going to be to moles. So we're going to put grams of aluminum nitrate on the bottom to cancel. And moles of aluminum nitrate on the top. At this point you should pause the video and calculate that molar mass yourself and then you can check it when you turn it back on. When you add up that one aluminum, those three nitrogens and nine oxygens, you should get the molar mass that goes with the grams of 213.01. And then that's the number of grams in one mole. All right, so now my grams will cancel. I'm left with moles. I'm still trying to get to volume, so I've got to have another conversion factor. So I'm going to set up my conversion factor, and I need moles of aluminum nitrate on the bottom to cancel. And I'm trying to get to volume. We're going to go ahead, molarity gets us from moles to liters, so we're going to make that liters. You can always do another conversion if you needed it with some sort of other unit like milliliters. This question doesn't ask for that, so we don't have to do that. So again, our molarity is 0 0.150 molar. So we know that that's 0 0.150 moles per liter, which is 0 0.150 moles per one liter. Okay, so the one goes with the liter, the 0 0.150 goes with the moles. Pause and put this into your calculator. Uh, what I got for my answer for this one is 0 0.156 liters. That's the correct number of sig figs. 
If I had asked you for it in milliliters, you could definitely go ahead and convert it. It would just easily convert to 156 milliliters. I know these seem tricky. We will do several of them in class when we start working on those moles and molarity problems. So don't worry, I'll help you figure them out. I'll see you in class.